another episode of Groovy Tuesday. My name's Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. I'm just going to move that mouse out of the way so I don't click it by mistake and end the stream. How's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's well. I've got my short sleeve shirts back on. Um, a bit sunny out there this morning. And, um, and it definitely gets warm in here with no windows. So um, I thought, yep, shirts are still hanging up from last year. So I, I then put one on for today. So good morning, Mo. First into the room. Welcome. Hope you're well. I'm very well. Thank you. So looking forward to another hour of chilling out, getting in the groove um, um, with my lovely friends, as always, every Tuesday. And here we come. Here comes Glynis. Good morning, Glynis. Karin. Um, it's lovely to have everybody's company again. I know it takes a while uh, for people to find us and to join the party. There we go. All of a sudden, there's a, a good stream coming in. So we've got Jane, we've got Nahid, we've got Ken, Cheryl, Lorraine. There we go. Should we do our usual and have our weather report whilst everybody's coming in? Um, so today, it's, sort of, it's a little bit fresh, um, but the sun is definitely shining out there today. And... Um, yeah, really nice. I think it's meant to be mixed over the coming weeks, um, but who knows? It can all turn around, can't it, and change overnight. So sunny in Polgate, um, where we've got, we've got lovely and sunny in Cambridgeshire, um, beautiful in Crawley, um, sunny in Ripon. It looks like everyone's got sun today. Um, old grey, grey and dull and colder with Jane. Oh dear, poor Jane. Uh, we'll send you some sunshine um, via Groovy Tuesday. That'll keep you nice and warm. Um, nice and sunny in North Cornwall, sunny in Manchester. There we go. See, we don't need to have our weather reports, do we? We don't need to tune into the weather every day. Just Groovy Tuesday. Um, so Mo said, the birds have been singing since 4 a.m. Ask her how she knows. How do you know, Mo? Have you been up since four o'clock? <laughs> oh dear. Well, hopefully you can sort of chill out and we can get in the groove and have some fun during this hour. Got lots to tell you about today. Really, yeah, lots and lots. Um, I've got my list to one side, so I hopefully I won't forget everything. So Mary says it's lovely and sunny in Newark, beautiful and crawly. Um, sunny in Flintshire. Jane Telford makes her own sunshine. I'm sure she does. Um, I'm sure we all do in um, some way or other, don't we? That should be my message from Stuart. The sound is good. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. Stuart's in the room if you have any questions. And so far, I've seen Glynis and Jane from the fantastic design team. And um, so... Yeah, any questions, ask away. If I catch them, I'll try and answer them. Um, we'll pop up links to various different bits and pieces during the course of the hour as well. Um, but yeah, we've definitely got lots to, to talk about today. And um, I think it was nice that in the shack yesterday with Barb and that letterpress sign that Dave created, um, make something today. Um, I'm sure that's what it said. Did it? Was it make something today? Um, yeah, and it was sort of like make someone smile. Um, yeah, I'm, I've got that totally wrong because it doesn't sound right now. But I'm sure somebody will tell me what it was. I was in the room as well. I mean, not physically in the room, but yesterday was a, a long time ago. So, <laughs> so okay. Thanks, for Stuart, for bringing on the link. There we go. Um, so Jane's making secret stuff today. Make something today. That was it. Yeah, did, is that what I said? I can't remember what I said now. Goodness me. It's been a long day already. But um, yeah. So nice and calm, nice and chilled. It's only just gone 10 o'clock. Um, have we got any newbies in the room today? I know we had um, a couple of new people in the shack yesterday. Uh, it was great to have their company as well. Um, 
So Anne Dowler is just managing to master pico cutting. Excellent. So um, yeah, there we go. So Stuart just sent me as well the thing, make something today. Thank you, Stuart. So um, yeah. So what have we been getting up to these? Um, we're on episode six. Well, we're on episode 96, but we're on part six of the lovely Rose and Lattice. And these are um, the lovely Rose is from our dear friend Jane Nesterenko. And there's a combination of two different plates. We've got an A5 plate and a standard A5 square plate. And what we've been doing, I thought this was a perfect design um, to incorporate various different techniques. And we've been looking at using the number one, the two, the three, and the four tools to get different um, levels of brightness on our parchment. And then last week, we started to have a look at um, colouring in, didn't we? And Tina also covered this during her show um, on the Pergamano show, the other last Thursday, I believe it was. Yeah, last, let me have a look at my schedule. I'm sure Tina was on last Thursday. That's how, yeah, she was. Um, yeah, seems like such a long time ago, doesn't it? Um, so we've got some lovely shows coming up this week, but we'll, I'll spill the beans on those a little bit later. Um, so what we did was we took the design exactly how it came, okay? And if I bring in my piece of artwork that we've been working on, if I turn the, the plate over, Okay, and lay that on top, you can see that's exactly what we've done. We've just traced it out just like so. And you'll see from the different levels of brightness, I'm going to zoom in so we can really pick up on the, the brightness or the different shades of white, so to speak. Let me see which one I'm going to come in this way. Um, there we go. So we can see um, the different levels of whiteness in relation to um, using the number one tool, the number two tool, et cetera, et cetera. And we started off really nice and, and easy by just tracing it out and then adding some white work to the dots. And as we, I said it when we've been working through this design, if you're brand new to Groovy, don't worry about not being able to do white work yet. Because I showed you a few cheats, didn't I? Good old um, white pencil. And we had a top tip from Jane as well. Um, so you'll still get a lovely result regardless of whether you've been doing Groovy for a week, a year, 10 years, 20 years. Um, all the Groovy system does is it gives you that opening that it opens that doorway, doesn't it, to get beautiful line art every single time and what it does it gives you I, I know I say this all the time it does give you the confidence to be able to want to learn more whether that be white work or coloring um, but you don't have to because you can just take the design exactly how it comes either on clear parchment on plain parchment designer parchment rainbow parchment I mean, here's a piece of artwork um, that Barb created in a craft along using some of our rainbow parchment. So if I just pop that, let me zoom out a little bit now. And this was a craft along in, how much are we going to go? There we go. Um, in September 2019, um, which you can go back and watch via our um, YouTube page. So you can see you've got that very sort of soft, subtle color tone. But when you take the paper that coordinates with the parchment, all of a sudden, if I bring that in underneath, it sort of, it intensifies the color of the parchment, okay? So if you're not into coloring or you don't feel comfortable with your coloring, then maybe the colored parchment is an option for you. Okay, so we always describe it as being on a bus journey. 
And the first stop on that bus journey is to get the crisp line up, okay? Now, whether you do it in one pass of the tool or several passes, if you watch Tina, Tina automatically goes over the design twice. It's just a habit thing, isn't it? Um, so it's entirely up to you whether you get the line art in the first pass of the tool or second or third. It is what it is, as long as you enjoy what you're doing. So that's the first step on the groovy bus journey. And then you may want to look at sort of going in different directions, whether it be doing the white work, doing the coloring, um, doing the um, perforating and pico cutting. It's entirely up to you. And we're here to guide you um, and show you sort of top tips and techniques and tricks. And, and when you've got the fantastic design team in the room as well, they're there to offer. I mean, I always learn something um, like the top tip with the white work with the pencil from Jane. So it's all about sort of just going at your own pace, whether you stop and start watching the tutorials, whether you go back all the way to the beginning. Our YouTube page is a vast library of tutorials, not only for Groovy, but also for stamping, for Inky, for Arty, um, for dyes. It's all out there. And you could definitely get lost over for days, really, and going back and having a look. So how far have we got with our design? Let's have a look. OK. <clears throat> so last week, we finished off adding a little bit of white work. OK. And it's not perfect, but we're going to enhance that this week. And also, we started to have a look at adding some color. So we had a look at various different ways. This was my scrap piece that I was working on. This is on the, the back. And we looked at different ways of either mixing the colors on our mix mat or blending direct onto the parchment. Okay. And Jane gave me a really, um, to get a lovely pink using, I'm using the Pergolina B pencils, um, which are all wax based pencils. And this lovely purple color gave a really lovely, sort of intense pink as opposed to using the red with some white, okay? Because I automatically thought, right, if I want pink, I'll take red and white, and that'll give me a lovely pink. And it does, it gives me a beautiful soft color, but using the purple gives you a different shade of pink as well. I suppose it's obvious really when you think about it. And then there's also a lovely burgundy color as well. So I had a practice on a rose head that I traced out to see which way worked for, for me or what way I wanted to go. I often like using the red and the yellow to create a lovely orange tone. And here's a piece of artwork here from Glynis, okay, which incorporates that lovely red and the yellow to give beautiful sort of shade and depth. Okay, so it's about having different options. Also, um, with the pencils, if you make a mistake, you can rub them out. Okay, so Karen wants to know what the top tip again with the white work. Of course I can. I mean, it's a top tip that Jane passed on to us. Okay, so let's have a look at, let's just do that before we, we get into it. Okay. No, actually, what we'll do first, rewind, rewind, rewind. Let's decide on what color rose you want to go for, okay? Do you want to go lovely oranges with yellows or do you want to go with pink? I think I'm going to go with Jane's top tip and go with the B14 and the B1, okay? So that's what I'm going to So decide on your color options. Okay, so that's what we're going to need. If you've got a mix mat, you may want to use that. We're going to need our dorsal oil. We're going to need our spot on sponge. We're going to need our blending nibs as well. These are coming very, very, very soon. Mr. Dave is down getting it all sorted at the moment with the new manufacturers. So these are imminent. 
Okay. So that's what we're going to need. And what we'll do is while everybody's getting their bits and pieces together, um, then I'll show you that top tip from Jane last week or the week before, I think it was. Okay. So if you're struggling with your white work, let's just pop these bits to one side. Okay. So I've got a lovely dahlia. Just happened to have one of lovely Jane and um, Nessa and Coast dahlias traced out. So if you wanted to add some white work to the tip of those petals, for example, okay, what you can do is, let me just show you the difference. So my way, when I first, I say when I learned white work, I, I struggled with white work. I was so heavy handed. So I used to sort of color in with a white pencil. Okay. And Bob said, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't go on TV and, and, and show that off as white work. It's white and it's work, but it's not white work as we traditionally know it to be. Okay. So I'm working on a hard surface. I'm working on the back and I've just put the white pencil on very, very lightly. Okay. So if I turn that over, you can see you've sort of got the effect of the white work. Okay. But what we need to do is take our soft mat, turn our work over, and I'm going to go with the, the largest ball tool. So I'm using the number four that comes in the starter kit. And I'm just going to very gently start at the top of the petal and just very gently put a layer of white work on. Okay. Not too much pressure. And what we're going to do now is you can see, if I turn it over, it's like an, an undercoat down. Okay. So let's do another petal just here. And I thought this was a great tip because sometimes you can create many um, different layers of white work depending on the design in which you're working. But you may feel that you need to do a card quickly or you may feel that you're not confident enough with your white work yet. So this is a great way of sort of just adjusting your white work until your confidence grows. Okay, so if I turn that over now, and let's bring that up to the camera. So this one here is the white work pencil, and this these two here have just got like a, an undercoat using the number four tool. Okay, good morning, Josie. Welcome. Glad to have you in the room as always. Um, so you can see here, this has been using the number four tool and this has been using the pencil, okay? So now if I turn it over, I go back onto the hard side of the mat, and now I'm gonna turn, where's my glasses gone? Glasses. And let's just put a layer of white pencil on this one here. So it's the same level of pressure I'm applying on this one. Okay, so just so I can go back in and intensify that a little bit more, but it will it won't it will only go as white as it will go. Okay, so now when I turn that over, let me zoom in on this one because if I zoom in, then it's easy for me to describe. Okay, so inwards. So let's come in. Nice and slowly. Okay. Oh, nearly fell off my chair then. You would have heard a crash bang. <laughs> okay. This one here is just with the white pencil. This one here has a slight undercoat using the number four tool and then the pencil on top. And this one here is just the number four tool. So I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but this one here is definitely whiter than just the pencil. Or is it my eyes? No, I, I think there's definitely a difference um, between the two. What do you reckon? Am I seeing things? Are my eyes going to I need to get my eyes tested again? 
or can you see a slight difference on that? Answers on a postcard. <laughs> no, it'll take forever. I think there's definitely a difference between the two. So if I go back on the back, you can see. So if I go back on here, and because it's white, I can't really build up that level of um, whiteness any further. And the only way I can change it is if I use a blending nib with some dorso oil, which will then um, dilute it. And so I'd have to go back on with more layers. Okay, so just to clarify, this one here is just the pencil. This one here has a layer of white work and then the pencil on top. And then this one here is just one layer of white work using the tool. Okay. And also, I know we haven't got Feely Vision TV, but I can feel that there, this one here is completely flat, apart from the raised line art around the outside. And these two are slightly raised. Okay which gives you that lovely white work look as well. Okay. So, Karen, I hope that answered your questions. And I'm glad that people can see the difference. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, Jane said, if I'd done a couple of layers, there'd be a massive difference. Okay. Well, maybe we can... i tell you what. Remind me, Jane. We'll come back to this one a bit later then. i tell you what. If, if I put... Or digress, but I need to be prompted on this. So if I put, let's put some white work on this one here. And what we'll do, we'll keep sort of coming back to it. Okay. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to put another layer of white work on that one. I mean, I can definitely see a difference between those two. And let's do another one just for the fun of it. See, it's very addictive. Once you start doing it, it's very addictive. And what I'm doing is I'm starting at the tip of the petal, and as I move down, I'm lifting the tool away. So I don't get a sort of a, what I don't want is, sort of like if I bring this in, I don't want a solid line like that. What I want is like a feathered finish. Similar to what you, you often do in the shack with Barb when you're colouring in, where it's that sort of that flicking, where you go three quarters in one colour, half in the next colour, and a quarter in the next colour. It's the same sort of principle to intensify. I mean, I'm going really heavy, and you can see how it's going white, but I know if I keep going, I'm going to go through the parchment. And if I turn this over now, that's really hard and um yeah it doesn't it looks white but it doesn't look very nice okay okie dokie are we all good with that i think we are okay so should we have a look at some coloring then one of my favorite parts okay so i'm going to take my rose let's turn this over oh that's very close and I'm going to go with Jane's colour options. We're going to go for this lovely sort of purple colour. So this is the B14. And I'm also going to go with the B1 as well, which is the white pencil. Okay, so we're going to mix both of those colours up to give a really nice pink colour. Okay. I can't believe it's 25 past already. Goodness me. So I shall waffle a little bit whilst we're, we're colouring in. But if you have any questions, don't forget the, the ladies are there to help. I'm going to use my groovy guard to lean on just to um, help me focus on the area in which I'm working. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a look at the rose itself. So very, very light pressure. I'm going to scribble on white. Okay, and it's very, very... Well, you can see it's very sc scratchy isn't the right word. It's very granular. Okay. 
and I'm just going in circular motions over the whole of the rows. Okay, I'm going over the white work as well. I'm not putting pressure on because I don't want to create a seal. So, just circular motions, light pressure until, I mean, you can do one section at a time if you want to, and we will do that when we start to change the color. But what I'm doing here is just putting that sort of undercoat in place. Okay. Now, if you want to, if you want to take each petal at a time, you can, um, and then it might be easier if you put the color onto your mix map. Okay, we have a, a coloring accessory kit, um, if you're new to coloring in, that gives you the mix mats, it gives you the dorsal oil, the spot on sponge, um, it also includes um, the blending nibs and a double ended eraser. Okay, and for me, learning with the coloring in, the double ended eraser makes a real confidence booster. Okay, so we look at that, and think, oh goodness me, it doesn't look very nice, and we turn it over, and it doesn't look anything, does it? Because it's very, as I said, it's granular. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take a um, clean blending nib, and let's try two different things. First off, I'm going to dry blend. Just see if you can sort of see the difference. See how it automatically um, smooths out the granules. Okay. Now, if I take my spot on sponge, this is dry from last week, and I add a tiny piece, a tiny piece, oh, a tiny drop. Um, okay tiny tiny drop of oil now i dip that in and i know straight away that i've got a lot more on there let me show you what happens so now if i start to blend that in you can definitely see it moves the granules more easily okay yeah we can see that can't we so all i'm going to do now i'm applying the same sort of pressure with the blending nib as I was with the white pencil. And I'm also working in circular motions as well. Pick up a little bit more oil. What you'll find is as you get more confident by using the oil, you'll know that what happens is that the, the granules of your color you're using stops moving. Okay. And then all you need to do is go back in and just top it up with a little bit. Now, another option that you could try if you're not sure about um, how much dorso oil to use is that you can um, dorse, i.e. you can put the dorso oil onto a tissue or a piece of kitchen towel, wipe it over your parchment first, and then apply the pencil. Okay. So the rain. Um, I've only got the pens. So I'm scared to start with the pencils and the oils. For me personally, Lorraine, um, I find if you're new to coloring in on parchment, the pencils um, are more forgiving. They're definitely more forgiving, and. Personally, for me, I find them a lot easier to work with. Um, because if I do make a mistake, then I can just take the eraser and rub it out and start again. I see we've got another top tip coming in there from the lovely Glynis. If you want to keep your nib just for white, put a little black spot on the thin end with a pen, then you won't accidentally use it for other colors. So what Glynis is saying, just put a little black dot on this end, or you could put it on the barrel, you could mark it there, because that's 
but I found that this is a really good end as well to use when you're coloring. So maybe you just put a little dot just on the barrel so you know then that that's just for your white. See, top tips come flying in. Not just from the design team, but some of our lovely viewers as well. Okay. So I'm noticing now it's not moving so well. So tiny little bit more oil. And there we go, it starts to move. Okay. So what I've done is I've created a base for my colouring. Okay. Now when I turn this over, oh, it looks really weird, doesn't it? I mean, if I take, let's take a piece of coloured um, paper and pop that under because it'll always look worse. But no, that's not what I'm after, is it? Although I suppose it gives that lovely sort of vintage look maybe i don't know what do you think i definitely want to introduce color though okay so working on the back again so this is where i'm now going to bring in this lovely color from jane the b14 okay and all i'm going to do i'm going to be very careful because this is going to be a really sort of dominant color to blend in. So to start off with, so I think I may have gone a little bit too heavy on that. So I've just put a little bit of color, same type of a pressure, towards the bottom of that petal. So let's see what happens now when I take a little bit of oil and I start to now move that. Oh yeah, you can definitely see that now. And now I'm introducing it to the rest of that petal. And I'm just spreading that color around. Okay. Now, if you find when you're doing this that the color's moving too much, okay, it means that there's too much oil on there. But it's not a, an issue because all you do is you just allow it to, to dry on the nib for a little bit longer and then allow it to evaporate on your parchment. And then you just go back in again. See, so, like I can go in here. It's amazing how far that color goes. Okay, so if I turn this over now, so let's take, let me turn it over. So we can see now how we start. It's very soft and pastel which is exactly what I'm after, because if I bring that in underneath, you can definitely see, can't you? It's very soft and subtle. And I often find myself that if you go on soft and subtle, oh, that's quite nice, soft and subtle, then you can build up um, the layers of colour, okay? As Barb often says, like, when you're working with ink pads, you go on light and then you build it up. If you go on dark, then it's harder to sort of tone that down, okay? So let me just show you the comparisons then. Where's my scrap piece of parchment I was working on? Come on, this bit of parchment. Okay, so let's do it on the dahlia, okay? Let's do it on here. So let's take that lovely, um, color straight, okay, and then let's take, this is going to be a real multicolored dahlia, this one, okay, now I should have kept that nib, I should have listened to Glynis and kept that one um, as a white one, but I got carried away, okay, now if I put a little bit of the pink on here. Let me go back to that nib now. That's a great tip though from Glynis about putting a little black mark. See, and now we're going to blend that into the whiteness. And if I find if you start at the bottom and you sort of you blend out, 
it will be weaker by the time it gets to the tip. Now, if we take that color direct, okay, like so, you can definitely see the difference, can't you? So that's just the B14 direct, and that's the B14 with the white as an undercoat. So if I bring in, let's turn it over, and I bring in the color paper, vibrant color there, a softer color palette there. If I put white underneath, you won't see the line up, but you'll definitely see the difference in the color, okay? So, whew. refocus, take your glasses off. What colors are you going for? Who's doing purples and pinks? Who's doing oranges and yellows? Or maybe you're going to something completely different. Come on, let me know what color you're coloring in your rows. And while you're telling me, I'm gonna give you a sneaky peek of the one special that is launching on Thursday at 6 p.m. on Create and Craft, okay? So it's on at six o'clock and nine o'clock on Thursday, and then on Friday at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., okay? Right, I'm gonna sneak in a plate. I'm actually, I'm gonna sneak in, I say sneak in, look, you can see, but you can't see what the designs are, can you? Okay, I need to zoom out for this one, so, Ooh, ooh. I'm gonna, excuse me while I stand up and show, I can see on the over, overhead camera how far I need to go out and then I'll do the big reveal. Okay, I'm almost at there, there we go. Okay, are oh, we ready? <sighs> Stunning. Ta-da! We have the Bijou Floral Ugh. Bijou Floral Alphabet and Numbers, illustrated by Barbara. Now, earlier in the year, um, many of you will be familiar with the designs um, and already have the fantastic larger um, floral alphabet. And earlier in the year, we reintroduced the stamp version as a Bijou version. And at the time, everyone was saying, oh, can we have it in Groovy? Can we have it in Groovy? So what you have here is an A4 plate that has your full alphabet on, and then you have the accompanying A5 square floral numbers, okay? And just to show you as a comparison, I mean, they work independently to give you those lovely designs. But when you look at the, the original collection, this is the A6 square. Let me bring that over here. Exactly the same designs, but in Bijou, okay? So it means now, not only can you um, spell out a word, a longer word on a smaller card using the smaller version, but you could take the larger letter as your main illuminated one and then complete the rest of it in the little Bijou version, okay? Now, not only are we bringing you the Bijou alphabet and numbers, but we also have something else that's rather special. Okay. Let's move this out of the way. We have a set of two A4 dotted lace frames. Okay. So you know in the past when we've been working with Josie's lovely duet plates, and you can see here we've got a series of one, two, three, four, five, six different frames on each plate, okay? So this one here has lovely sentiments on it, and it has a little bijou version of the alphabet that comes on the plate mate from the starter kit. On the second one, we also then have family. So we've got husband, wife, sister, brother, daughter, son, nan, granddad, mum, dad, auntie, uncle, niece, nephew, and more lovely designs together. Okay, so the one day special is all four of these plates. 
okay, at a super duper price. Let me show you a couple of pieces of artwork just to tempt you or tease you or be naughty, basically. So this is a piece. Let me zoom in on this now. So I'm going to just stretch up and zoom in. Come in nice and slowly. Now, many of you are familiar with um, Groovy Tuesday will recognize this style of artwork instantly. This is a piece of artwork created by Francis Knott. Okay. And what Francis does is she takes the plate and then she paints with it in a traditional style. So let me bring it in on this one here. Okay. Now, if you love this effect and you want to know how you can also achieve that style, on um, the Clarity Matters blog on Sunday, just gone, I'm sure Stuart could pop a link up. Francis did a fantastic step-by-step -step on how you can create the painted effect, okay, on parchment. Because many of you often admire this style of artwork and think, oh, I can never do that. Francis makes it achievable. If you go to, there we go, Stuart's popped the Clarity Matters blog up. And if you bookmark that for later, you can go through and see how she creates this lovely painted porcelain type of look on parchment, okay? So there's one piece of artwork to show you. We have another piece of artwork by Francis. So Francis has taken the new Bijou floral alphabet to spell out the words bloom, live simply, bloom wildly and the rest of the letters are taken from the plate that contains the frame and what um, Frances has also done she's extended those little squares to make a larger frame as well okay so this is it really does show the versatility of not only the floral alphabet but also those lovely little um lace frames, dotted lace frame. So they're all embossed, okay? So it's really nice and easy to work. It's very therapeutic as well. So let's have an, another look at another piece of artwork. So this one is created by Jane Telford using the frames and a lovely sentiment on the inside. Okay, just like so. Then I have another piece by Karen Jackson. So this time Karen's taken one of those frames and she's just cut into it to create little photo corners and then done the W for wisteria. So when you look, you can just take that little piece. So these are great for um, quick little toppers. You can use them in coasters. They fit perfectly in the coasters as well. So you've then got a gift to accompany a card. And then I'm just going to give you a sneaky peek of another piece of artwork. And if you want to see more of this, then um, you'll have to tune in on Thursday. So this is by Carol Baker. Let me just zoom out a little bit now. Okay, let me zoom out. So Book of Flowers. Okay. And I'm just going to open a couple of rounds and pages. Look. Using the frame. So these are lovely individual little card toppers. And each of the letters will fit inside them. So you could have E in 12 different frames. You can have F in 12 different frames. Okay. Let's do another... There we go, Quaker Lady, Arthur Rose. I'm just going to do one more. Let's see if I can get some numbers. There we go, number one and number two. Okay, so that, my friends, gives you a little sneaky peek of what's to come on the one day special on Thursday. Okay. Stunning.
absolutely stunning. Sorry, I've got to take them away now. I've got to hide them until Thursday. Um, as always, the design team do a fantastic job and without all their hard work, it would be so much harder to present um, the products on TV. The lovely um, Glynis and Josie have prepared all the um, demos over the course of the four hours. So a massive thanks as always to those lovely ladies. Um, but the Bijou Floral Alphabet, I've got some little um, tips and tricks up the sleeve. Well, not these sleeves, these are a little bit short um, to show. So I hope you can tune in on Thursday. Um, I think it's gonna be a really, really good show. And to take the, the illustrations from Barbara um, and make them bijou so that they work independent, but they also work perfectly with the original A6 Square versions as well. Um, yeah, really, really special. Okay. So, I hope I haven't scared you all off now. <laughs> But definitely check out um, the Clarity Matters blog. Um, I see Jane's just popped it up as well, how to paint with pens and pencils, because it's a fantastic step-by-step -step, um, tutorial. And all of the design team, they spend hours and hours and hours creating these step-by-step -step tutorials for, for us to follow. And then lovely Gracie in New York, she lays it all out, pops all the links into the products, um, it gives you a heads up on what's coming up the week ahead with the Shack, Groovy Tuesday, TV shows. Um, so it's definitely worth investigating. There's so many different tips and techniques on there, and it's all broken down step by step with pictures and written instructions. So as always, the design team, well, I, thank you isn't good enough. It really isn't. Um, because I know how much time and effort goes into it. And I know many of you that already sort of check out the Clarity Matters blog every Sunday appreciate all that hard work as well. So thank you. Right, okay. So let's have a look at a little bit more coloring, shall we? And I can tell you what else is coming up. So I'm gonna zoom back in. So let me just zoom back in this way. See, that looks, from a distance, that looks like terrible white work on that rose, doesn't it? Um, a little bit closer, I think. Okay. So don't forget, if you're new to Groovy Tuesday, you're new to the shack, and don't forget to sign up to our emails that we send out. It keeps you informed of upcoming TV shows, upcoming events, um, special offers that we often run on the website. I'm sure Stuart could pop a link up to um, the area where you can sign up to the newsletters um, to keep you informed of all things clarity and what's going on. And often it gives you a sneaky peek of what's appearing on the next TV shows. Okay, before we do the, the colouring, should we go back to that um, dahlia, if I can find it? Okay, let me just swap this out for the soft mat. And we're going to focus on the area here. Okay, so this was pencil. This was white work and pencil. And this is just white work. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the number three tool. And I'm just going to turn this round. Because I'm going to do it away from myself. And I'm going to use the number three tool now to add another layer of white work on there. And I'm going to do another layer of white work on there. And also on there as well. Okay, so pencil, one layer of white work, and then pencil. And now we've got a couple of layers of white work on there. So now, if I turn over to the hard side of the mat, Oops, so it's still working on the back. And now I'm going to add a white pencil on top of this one. Okay. So 
pencil, white work pencil, white work, two layers of white work and pencil, and just white work. Okay. Turn it over. I'll repeat that. Pencil, one layer of white work and pencil, um, two layers of white work, two layers of white work and pencil, and two layers of white work. So there's definitely a difference now between those two and these three over here. Okay. So just a little, <coughs> excuse me, suggestion if you're worried about being too heavy on your um, white work or you're in a rush um, to create the effect of white work um, quickly. Okay. So I hope that helped on that question. Okay, so let's have a look now at that purple. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just putting another layer, just a light circular motion, just at the base of that petal. I'm going to take my same nib as well. And I'm just going around in circular motion. Now, can you see it's not really moving? So all I'm going to do just to get it moving is a tiny little bit of dorsal oil. And all of a sudden it starts to move. Okay. So light pressure, circular motions, and then just start to pull it out very gently. Okay. Nice and easy. And I'm going to take the purple and I'm just going to put a little bit on there. And then just go backwards and forwards within that area. Okay. My watch is telling me that I'm lazy and I need to stand up. <laughs> I'm going to take a tiny little bit just on the tips, just there. And then just break it down very, very softly. And you'll notice that as I did that, I actually turned the nib round. So, and then just break it down. Okay, so, so we've got the ODS coming up. Then on Saturday, the lovely Tina Cox will be on Create and Cross. We've got three days of Groovy for you to keep you entertained. So Tina will be on Saturday at 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. Get Groovy with Tina. So I hope you can join in and keep her company. Um, open days, Barb mentioned those yesterday. They're fast approaching. So um, if you're interested in those, Stuart can um, pop a link up. Um, for the Clarity Open Days. As Barb mentioned yesterday, um, Saturday um, is a little bit quieter than the Friday. Um, so if you're thinking, oh, I want to come but I'm worried about too many people, then maybe Saturday is a good option for you. Um, we had a meeting yesterday, putting some plans in place. Um, Two fantastic days. I need to put some more on. Didn't put enough on there. Scribbly, scribbly, scribbly. Scribbly, scribbly. That's a technical term, scribbly. Um, so that's all starting to come together for the celebrations and the, the clarity open days. Um, so I'm sure Stuart could pop a link up to those for the, the tickets in Ditton. We've got make and takes, we've got hourly raffles. Um, yeah, two real sort of fun filled days demonstrations. Got a lovely, uh, yeah, make and take snip clinic. If you want to get to grips with your um, snipping and your pico cutting, then the lovely Gr Grinis, Glynis, <laughs> sorry, Glynis, 
Linus will be there to hold your hand and your scissors, so to speak. Um, great way of getting hands-on experience on that. Um, so we've got that. So we mentioned the, um, the Clarity Matters blog um, that Gracie does and the design team. That's on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, and so we've got that. Uh, we've got Barb's blog as well. Barb's blog was lovely yesterday. That was quite interesting about the um, bluebells, what type of bluebells they were. Um, so you could check out the the bluebells, the bluebells. Check out Barbara's bluebell blog. Um, that was quite interesting. It was interesting reading the responses, the difference between an English bluebell and a Spanish bluebell. Um, so. Um, that was really interesting because you often just see them in bluebells are bluebells, but oh no, there's different types. So that was good. Um, so we've got that, we've got that, we've got that. Um, then back in the blog with Barb on Monday at 10 o'clock in the Shack Shack. And I will be back with you again on Tuesday next week as well. Got lots coming up next week as well. Lots to keep you occupied. And next thing you know, it'll be Christmas. <laughs> no. um, so as I'm sort of talking and waffling on, um, you'll notice that all I'm doing, I'm just lightly scribbling the colour in. So what I'm doing now, and then just picking up a little bit of the the oil, just to break it down initially. And as you start to see that the scribbles no longer start to move, that's when you need to pick up a little bit more oil. Okay. And if you find that whilst you're doing this, you think, oh no, I've gone on too heavy in areas. I didn't really want it, this sort of shade of pink. Um, I've gone over the edge. Um, I've made that too light, this is too dark. And this is where the magic of the pencils really does sort of kick in with the eraser pencil. Because if I find that if I use the pink end, and I go over very, very lightly, it sort of just takes it back a little step. Okay, it's very, very lightly. So I think I've gone on too heavy there. Just very, very lightly. But I would suggest that you use a brush to brush away any debris from the rubber. Try not to blow on your parchment, because if you're like me, you're likely to spit. Not I'm saying we're all spitters, but it's just, <laughs> if that sort of makes sense. So let's have a look at what we've got so far. And I'm putting it on white just so you can see the intensity of the colour. And it looks terrible. It really does because you can't see the whiteness and you can't really see the colour. But if I take another colour of paper underneath, we can start to see now how it's starting to sort of build up. And this isn't finished yet. All we've done really is put sort of an undercoat of color down first. Okay, so next week, what we'll start to do, you can definitely, can you see the difference there between that sort of the darkness and then it goes to lightness? And we're gonna slowly start to build up these areas. Okay, but as I said, if you start to color in and you think, no, 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 I really didn't want that color or I've gone over the line, then these pencil erasers, as Barb says, one of our best sellers, I can just take it and remove the color. Where did I put that brush? And start again. Okay. If I go over the edge, I can use it just to tidy up where I've overlapped as well. Okay. 
So I shall leave you with that. It doesn't look much. I'm going to put that underneath. You can see the colour. And if I bring this piece in that Barbara created, you can see how we're starting to build up the intensity of the colour. Just adding that little bit of shading just underneath. And we're also going to do some colouring on the front as well. But I mean, look at the way that that petal curves. You can see it sort of, it's really concave, isn't it? Where it's sort of curling round. It looks as if you could pick that petal off. Um, and that's what we're working towards, believe it or not, on this piece here. Okay, <laughs> so if I turn that at an angle, we're slowly starting to build up to that. Okay. So, thank you. I can't believe the time's flying by again. So, thank you once again for joining me. Thank you to the design team for helping out in the room and for Stuart as well. Um, don't forget, Crate and Craft Thursday, 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. with the Bijou floral alphabet numbers and those lovely dotted lace frames. Um, Friday, 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Then Saturday, Get Groovy with Tina at 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Back in the Shack on Monday on Facebook and YouTube Live at 10 a.m. And then I'll be back with you for Groovy Tuesday on Tuesday at 10 a.m. So enjoy the rest of the week. Enjoy the weather. I think most of you have got sunshine now. I think Jane even said that some sun had come out up with her. So enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you all next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.